Today I fully automate the production of Blaze Cakes, the most powerful power source in the Create mod. To achieve this I build another huge building, spend hours landscaping the ski resort village area, build a whole bunch of new farms for eggs, sugarcane, lava, nether wall, glistery melon, potions of healing and nether rack. So much to do, so little time, so let's create Blaze Cakes. I'm gonna need a whole lot of them and they're not the easiest things in the world to produce. They require lava and blaze cake bases, which require eggs, sugar, and cinder flour, which you get from crushing netherrack. And we've got all of those things over here, so what's the problem? In this building here, we've got 32,000 netherrack, and we've also nearly got nearly 50,000 cinder flour, so that's gonna be a lot of blaze cakes. We've also got nearly 3,400 sugar, and in this building over here, we've got a handful of eggs, 247 of them. The other thing we've got in a good quantity is lava. We're actually grabbing it from the nether under there, and we're bringing it down via a little train into our power station over here and the power station's absolutely loaded with it there 282 buckets worth so realistically we've got absolutely everything we need to start producing blaze cakes the problem is the lava train is a little bit unreliable even though the chunks are force loaded it often just forgets that doesn't bring any lava over and then my power station ends up running dry i also need all of this sugar for other projects that are coming up later on and my chickens are just not pooping out anywhere enough eggs which means today i need to build a whole bunch of farms and i didn't think there were any recipes to make netherrack but it turns out you can create netherrack by using potions of healing on cobblestone and potions of healing is just glistering melon slices and glistering melon slices are just melon with gold it just so happens that in the last episode we actually made a melon and pumpkin farm so we've got over 2,000 of them so that's good but what about gold you might say you need gold for glistering melons and you're gonna need it in pretty high quantities well don't worry about that either peeps because not too long ago in this series we built these amazing factories and one of these factories just happens to produce a whole bunch of gold and if we look at this storage vault here there is 15,000 gold nuggets in it but that still means in this episode we've got a whole bunch of farms to produce eggs sugar nether axe into flour and lava and that's quite a lot of things to do in one little episode and currently the place where we're going to be building this doesn't even exist so i should probably start there if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It only takes a couple of seconds and it really helps me out. we go our last building in this little ski resort area is complete which is fantastic and that means that every single little spot in this little ski resort area is now filled in and in this building i've created a whole bunch of rooms inside including spaces for some shop fronts so we've got a little shop front area here if we go at back out of there and into this one we've got another little shop front area here and if we go out of that one and come around this corner we've got a big old shop front area here and they're all connected and each area has a nice big area behind it for well farms and things that we need to produce and coming through here we've got access to upstairs which has even more rooms so we've got another big area here an even bigger area here and going upstairs again gives us access to even more area and that's good because we've got a lot of things to do here starting with an egg farm so we're going to need a few eggs to get that going and egg farms are not particularly big things to build so we don't need a great deal of room for that one and i think this little area here on the first floor floor will be absolutely fine now ideally i'd like this building linking up to our storage drawer system which comes in here and links up underground into that one there and i'm going to link it underground again but unfortunately at this particular moment in time there's absolutely no basement on this building so i guess i should do that next I have found other basement. And there we go. That's a big old space for us to be working with. So I better get all of these things connected. But not only are we going to need storage drawers in here, we're going to need power too. So I'm going to wire that up next. 
And there we go. Now we're all connected and we've even got a little speed controller on there so it's separate from everything else. And that just comes up behind our storage drawers here. And now we've got power going across the room and down to this point here. Although I don't think I actually need power for a chicken farm. What I do need is the storage drawers. Lovely. You would hardly even know unless you come upstairs. But it's fine. So I guess it's time to lag out this world even more than it already is. by hatching a whole bunch of chickens if possible. Really? None? Oh, there we go. We got... Oh, jeez. This... I'm going to need a lot of eggs. Oh, how did you get... How did you get out? What? Stop it. How do you escape? Impossible. Stop. Come back. Oh, no. oh jeez. Now you've fallen through the floor. Come here. No. Not the, not the slabs. The chicken game. The chicken game? Yes, it's been a bit of a game, this chicken fiasco. Um... There we go. That's all of the eggs used, which means we've got a whole bunch of chickens in there. Now, one last thing I'm going to do up here is make a very, very temporary little chicken feeder so that we can get these all grown up and probably breed them a little bit as well. Lovely. We've got a little automatic chicken feeder. The only thing I don't like is the fact that those seeds there are probably going to end up despawning, which is not ideal. However, I've got some smart shoots. Let's get rid of that, get rid of that. I'm going to put a smart shoot on there with a filter for seeds. Put the draw controller on top of it and then just connect that there. And now we won't have any problems. Egg farm done. Sugar next. And back in my test world, I want to know what's going to grow sugar cane the fastest and will it make any difference? So we've got dirt, sand, rich soil and peat. Click go and see which one is going to be the winner. They're all pretty much exactly the same. Sugar, no, yeah, they're all the same. I was thinking I could squeeze quite a lot of it in with a setup or something like this, but I still need to get a contraption in here that can actually chop it all down as well. And that would actually give us 64 sugarcane in total. So I don't know whether I'm better off doing it this way round or doing it this way round. And this actually gives us space for 84 pieces of sugarcane, which is substantially more. And I think we've got enough room here to get a little flying machine coming up and down there. Sugarcane farm done. We just need to get the sugarcane out of there into our storage system and turn it into sugar. In fact, we could probably turn it into sugar right right here a few moments later okay so that's sugarcane and eggs sorted let's take it off the list next we need netherrack which means we need to make potions of healing which means we need melons over here and gold over here and blaze burners as well so some kind of fuel too Oh, geez. So melons are going to be incredibly easy for us to access because we can pull them straight out of the storage system. Gold, however, on the other hand, is going to be a bit more of a problem because gold is all the way behind this building in that building over there. And that's a substantial amount further for our storage drawers to interact with. So I think it's about time we sorted out the landscape around this building and got our little delivery van doing a little bit more than just going to the farm. It's your time to shine, little man. Well, not yet. I've got to do a lot of landscaping. But in a minute, it's going to be your time to shine, little man. My chests have all turned to presents. That must mean I'm recording this on Christmas Eve. And I am. And that's because I'm running very late. And I'm running very late because I've done a ridiculous amount of off-camera work. Yeah, I may have just spent a little bit of time getting our van that goes to the farmhouse to go all the way around the town, which meant decorating the entire town, putting these little track marks down to make it look like the van had actually been running around. As you can see, it comes around here and it goes to the gold farm. It doesn't actually get any gold yet we've still got to do that but then it comes back up here to this new car park area that i've created and there you go it's in the car park at the minute however it is going backwards at the moment don't worry about that we'll fix that in a minute i've also added in this little car in the car park to prove that this is indeed a car park and i've added a coach because of course people coming on holiday here would probably be going on the coach and over at this end of the car park we've got a little staircase that takes you up to this point here which takes you up to the station and then this path comes back round this way and it comes down here and all this path connects i've got a couple of little spaces here that I was thinking of adding a couple of little trees into and that's probably about it which might not seem like much but it's taken ages so what I need to do now is find that van wherever it is oh yeah it's still going the wrong way geez turn it round so it's going the right way a little bit like this there we go now it's going the right way and if we follow it around the town we can see it comes over to the factory area and this is where I need it to collect gold and in order to do that I actually need to make a couple of changes to the van but before I make the changes let's just watch it it's going to reverse back 
back out of the factory area here. It's going to reverse down that little side street there, and it nearly banged into that. Honestly, it was nearly. It didn't actually do it. No, it didn't go through there at all. And it's going to come all the way up here, this time facing in the correct direction into the car park. It's going to come into the car park, almost collide with the bus, but not quite. And then it's going to reverse into this little spot here, and that's where we need to connect up to the station to deliver the items from the station back to our storage area, which is where it's going now. Come back, Vad, I need you. And it's coming round the town here. It's going to come down this little slope here, and it's going to go round to this corner here. And then it's going to stop and reverse back in there, and then it will drop off all of the items that it hasn't actually collected from the gold farm and the other thing. I need your pat, sir. The first thing I need to do is actually move this storage controller because I've had to give this van a double axle. And what I mean by that is I've had to give it two bogies instead of one to enable it to go around the corners properly. And now when it reverses into things, this storage interface is too close. So we're going to move that. And we're just going to put that there instead. And I also need another storage interface inside there facing downwards. And that's so I can connect to the gold farm and over at the car park for the train station. And there we go. That's all the changes made. We can put the van back together again. Oh, my little man's fell out. Oh, jeez. My driver. Your little man's fell out. Well, I don't, I don't, don't, not like that. Okay. You're ready to go, sir. Off you go. And now what I need to go, do is go over to the gold farm, figure out where it's actually going to need to get the gold from, and then connect the gold. And there we go. I now have gold connected along this conveyor, coming down here, going up that chute there, and through this smart chute, which is being controlled by a redstone link over at the storage area. So it shouldn't get too many. So now it should be coming over to the train station. So I need to link that up next. And here he comes. And I'm just going to dig a hole in that wall there, put a storage interface in there behind it. And then all I got to do is link this up to the station. And we just happen to have all of that stuff just there. And there's a little bit of chain drive on there. And that will very... Jeez, that's slow. That's really slow. Oh, really? Fine. Speed controller. Attach that to the belt. Get it spinning the right way. Ideally, a little bit faster than that. There we go. 64 should do it. And that's all connected. And now that's connected. We can remove that. Stick one of those on there. One of those in there. And then I can get rid of all of these chutes below it. We don't need this line anymore. Good. My little temporary train can go. Everything is now connected. The van is going to be bringing the gold and the slime and the sugar cane from the train station. So that means we've got everything we need to start making glistering melons. So that's good. And the other good thing is that all of that sugar cane we planted has been getting turned into sugar. So we've got over 6,000 sugar now. But the slightly concerning thing is that we're still breeding chickens. So I should probably stop this from feeding them. Oh, geez. That's a lot of chickens. Well, hopefully having a lot of chickens should mean we got a lot of eggs. Oh, yes. Over a thousand. Oh, good. Everything's going well. Now, as I've said before, the Create mod will consider any area of fluid that's more than 10,000 blocks in size to be infinite, which means if you make an area full of 10,000 lava sources, it can take from that, but that lava will never disappear. But how big is 10,000 blocks of lava? How big a hole do I need to make in order to fill it with 10,000 lava sources? And in order to know that, we just need a little bit of maths. We just need the cubed root of 10,000, which is 21.54. So if I make a hole that's 22 by 22 by 22 blocks and fill it full of lava sources, that's going to be more than 10,000. So I need an area that's bigger than that. Down in our basement area, you see we've got this absolutely ridiculous area down here now with realistically not all that much going on in it other than a few bits of train track. Yeah, that area there is the perfect size to have a big old lava farm. So I just need to dig down 22 blocks and then fill it full of lava. Now, in order to dig out a hole that's 22 blocks wide by 22 blocks deep, I'm going to need a whole lot of mechanical drills. So what I'm doing now is just mixing up some andesite alloy. I've already created a whole bunch of andesite casing, which is why I've got no andesite alloy left. And then I can craft up a whole bunch of drills and I'm going to need over seven stacks. And there we go. 484 mechanical drills are now in place. So these just all need gluing together and I don't think I'm going to be able to do the whole thing. No, the area's too big. Can I go all the way to here? There we go. We'll go to there and then hopefully we can get across to there. There we go. So all I need now is this rope pulley, which I believe if I put that on there like that and then stick a hand crank on it, I just need to wind it down 22 blocks. How hard could it be? Off we go. Oh yeah, I should put some storage on it. Otherwise it's going to be cobblestone everywhere. Here we go. Hmm, it's a bit boring doing it by hand. That's better. Now it's automatic. Fantastic. 
Oh man, I've got a couple of blocks too far. Oh geez, well that's fine, that really doesn't matter. And now, how am I going to get all of these back without having to break them all individually? Well, I'm going to use my vein mining pickaxe. Now, it's all right having this big hole, but how am I going to now fill it full of lava? Well, realistically, there's a couple of ways we could do that. One way would be to do basically what we're doing in here and get a train that goes into the nether. And that train could drive in something a little bit like this, go to a tank, something a little bit like this, pull all of the lava out of the nether and just drive backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards until it's all done. But realistically, that's going to take absolutely forever. So I've got another idea. Now, this other idea is going to involve the nether, but I'm going to create a system that should do it a whole bunch faster. So what I've got here is a hose pulley that's going a couple of blocks down, a little tank with nothing in it and a pump. And next to me, there's a nether portal, which I'm going to go through and then link up on the other side. So now what I need to do, now that those things link up, is make a system that sends buckets of lava from one side to the other. And for that, we're going to need power. So let's have a few of those. And let's stick on a speed controller so we can get many, many power. Tank, pump, pipes, hose pulley. And if I wind that down one block, that should start pumping in lava into there it is. Okay, here's my little plan in this very crowded room. We've got our pump coming into this spout, which is above a depot. If a bucket goes on there, it's going to get turned into a lava bucket, which is then going to come through this brass filter, go up into this dropper there, and that's hopefully going to get fired through the nether portal to the other side. All I need to do is put an observer there facing the other way, that's powered now and it should come through here into the overworld and there it is on the floor so we need to capture that and get it into this tank somehow but we'll worry about that in a minute then the idea is the bucket will get thrown back through and hopefully we should see another one pop back out. There we go. So if I just empty that and throw it back in, it should fill up and come straight back out again. There we go. Magic lava. Oh, this is amazing. So all I need now is a funnel on there, bit of shaft in there, and that's the pump going. Look, it's already pumping it in, so that's good. So now if I send that bucket back through, hopefully it's going to come back in full of lava. There it is. <laughs> and it'll go around again. Well, in order to make this a little bit better, what I actually need to do is block off the nether portal so it can't come through. And now, hopefully, we should be good to go. Oh, there we go. It's going. Is it going to come back? It is. So now all I need to do is make a whole bunch of buckets, let's say 10, and send them all in. And we should then start getting a stream of buckets coming through. There we go. Pretty much constantly. There should never be a gap in buckets now. This is wonderful. Now, it's going to take a while before we've got 10,000, but that'll just keep running and running and running off to its own little heart's content. And this will eventually get filled up all the way down to the bottom for free. Okay, so while this very slowly fills up, I think it's time I got on with something else. And that's something else else apparently is collecting eggs because we've overflowed in eggs now oh geez we've got too many eggs so i brought a whole bunch of items over here from the other places so that we know where it all is and i think it's about time we start working on some netherrack because that's what my list tells me i should do and just as a recap to make netherrack we need to get melon slices and we need to get gold we need to craft them all together into glistening melons we need to mix them up with some awkward potion in order to make potions of healing and then we need to combine that with some cobblestone in order to make netherrack and it's just occurred to me i haven't brought any cobblestone over here. In fact, today I've actually thrown out over 80,000 cobblestone from all of this digging that I've been doing and all the basement building underground. I threw it all into that lava because it was filling up my backpack. I should have thought about that. I'm such a mort. It doesn't matter. Cobblestone's easy. But the thing is, cobblestone's over here and I didn't get that going into my lorry to take over there. Oh, jeez. I'll add that to the list later on. Right now, we'll just... Oh, jeez. Anyway, one thing I hadn't thought about at all is all potion and to get that we need nether wart and i haven't even thought about nether wart for the 58 millionth time today back over at hill valley i do have a little bit of nether wart i've got 11 pieces but i don't have a farm for it so that's something else i've got to do oh geez now back in our original building where we were doing all our food factory stuff if we go upstairs i've actually got something that would be perfect for a little nether wart farm this is pretty much exactly what we need so i could potentially just extend this out a little bit and add nether wart to it or i could find somewhere perhaps a little bit bigger than this in fact this room might do to just squeeze in a small one for nether wart realistically how much do we need and in fact if i'm being sensible we don't need all of this for mushrooms whilst we are using mushrooms for cooking we're really not using that much and now we've got nearly 50,000 brown mushrooms and nearly 32,000 red ones so yeah i think that we might be a bit overkill on the mushrooms so in that case what i can do is swap this out for nether wart and just have a very small little mushroom machine in here that makes sense to me there we go we're no 
no time at all. We've converted that into a nether wart farm. And in here, we've got a little mushroom farm. And I'm just waiting for... Oh, it's done it. It's grown, which means we can turn that back on. And there we go. Wonderful. I think a nice little potion brewing setup would fit nicely in this room. So I'm going to need blaze burners, auto crafting for up to nine slots, spouts and mixers. Oh, how could it be? Well, I guess the first thing to do sensibly would be to find a way of getting lava into here. So I guess putting a tank in here ready to store the lava might not be such a bad idea. Oh, and look at that. That's directly over the lava as well, which is ideal. Okay, here's my little plan. It's not wired up yet, but I think this might work. We're going to have lava coming up here into buckets. This mechanical arm is going to pick up those buckets of lava and feed these blaze burners if it can reach. Coming out of the back here, once we've actually got some glistering melon, they're going to come onto these depots, and this mechanical arm is going to take them and put them in this basin. This mechanical arm is going to take nether wart from that little depot and put it in that one, and that basin's also going to have water pumped into it. Once that's turned into awkward potion, this filter on this smart fluid pipe is going to pump it through into this basin and that smart fluid pipe is going to pump out the healing potion all the way downstairs into another tank that I've just added, which is going to hold our healing potion. But this is never going to work without any power or without any glistering melon and without lava, I guess. Jeez, how's that getting on? Eh, it's coming, slowly but surely it's getting there. My buckets are still coming through thick and fast. It'll happen one day. we we'll be recording that till next Christmas. I know wait for that lava still it's faster than a train i don't think it is definitely is so as you can see behind this i've actually got power running in through here and i think i'm just going to take some power from there to power these things here so this should start making awkward potion with a bit of luck oh no i haven't powered that more power there we go now everything's powered now it should start making awkward potion but of course it's not because the blaze burner's not heated because there's no lava yet so let's just test this out manually let's put a bucket there might as well put a bucket on there ready for when it's coming and yes it's made awkward potion that's good and it has got pumped through into there that's fantastic oh we're getting somewhere at least so if i throw that glistery melon down onto there no come on there we go that arm should pick it up and then if i give that a bit of lava that should turn that into healing potion it did and that should all go out of the pipe and it should go downstairs which it doesn't appear to be doing that could be to do with this filter instant health on the allow list tick put it on there oh there we go i must have just had the wrong thing in the filter so now if we go back downstairs we should see that in this tank here there we go we've got some potion of healing it's coming through oh no it's going back out again because i haven't plugged oh geez it's gonna be all over the floor stop oh no it's all leaking out of there oh geez. i can't get to it anymore there's too many things going on in here excuse me oh geez um um there we go okay so now all that's in place and seemingly working i guess now would be a good time to automate glistering melon okay so this is going to be the little auto crafting setup we're going to have the auto crafter pumping all of the created items out of there and into the that draw controller slaves there so that should be the output on the inputs really simple we've just got a bunch of item drains and we've got some brass funnels if i flip this one round so it's coming out the gold nuggets although we only want eight at a time really will come across there and they'll go into there and because they're all connected they'll go around the outside and i'm going to do the same thing with this one here although again we don't want full stacks we only want one, one at a time and then we've got the melon in the middle that's good so far all we need now is a bit of power and that should be really easy just sticking that there and there we go we connected it it's is it going to work? Is it going to make what we want? It is. Glistering melon is now being produced. That's great. So we're now producing glistering melon, which should mean we're now producing potions of healing. We are. And now we're producing awkward potions. So everything's ready, except for our lava's not ready. We've got no lava. But apart from lacking lava, we're now actually producing quite a lot of this potions of healing. And we've got 6,000 millibuckets of it. And it only costs 25 millibuckets per netherrack. So I guess now's the time to set up our little netherrack production area we've got a bit of a problem because our potion of healing pipe is coming out right at the back over there where it can't get to it and i need it to come out somewhere else in fact we don't we don't even need a potion of healing tank i could just pump this straight into our system so all we need is our smart pipe coming out of there with the filter on and we can send that straight into the netherrack producing thing i think that's all i need to do we've got a pipe coming across here it's a bit jiggledy it's a bit iggledy piggledy but it'll do it's fine over to a depot we've got a brass funnel with with cobblestone output that will put cobblestone on there a mechanical garment will get that put it on there it'll get turned into netherrack it'll get put in there easy so if i tell this to take from there deposit on there i also want it to take from there as well maybe i need two arms to do that okay you can do it with one probably can but it's fine take from there deposit in there 
take from there, deposit in there. Thank you. Now we just need power for you guys. Okay then, so let's say I go and dump some cobblestone into this system, let's say there, and let's just have an absolute ton of the stuff. 18,000. 18,000 and a bit cobblestone in there. So now if I go back up here, cobblestone should... There we go. It's already doing it. Look at that. Nice. Oh, look at this. This is amazing. I wonder then. Let's grab ourselves an item drain. Put that there. Put cobblestone as the filter on there. Move this depot across by one. And that's full of awkward po How have you got awkward po But you've got a filter on. What's the point in a filter if it don't filter out the thing I want it to fit? Oh my goodness, this game's so dumb. Poor workman blames his tools. Yeah, well, I put... Uh, shut up. You don't know, mate. If I put an item filter on, I expect item filter to do filtering. That's how item filters work. I suppose I could deny awkward potion. That might be a good way of doing this. Deny awkward potion. Respect data. Tick. I don't know if that'll help. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. There's only one way to find out. Stick that on there. Put one of them on it. Join it together. Anyway, is this going to work? Item drain onto there. It does. Okay, so then we just need one mechanical arm. Pick up from there. Stick it in there. Bish, bash, bosh. Jobs are good. Just need some power. Is it working? It is. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. It's all going exactly as I'd hoped. So aside from the fact that we don't actually have any lava at all coming in here yet, we can pretty much tick Netherrack off the list because as soon as it gets high enough, it's going to just start working itself, which is fantastic. And it is getting there slowly but surely, even though it doesn't look like it is, but it is. So we just need to turn that all into cinder flour. However, I don't need to do that at all. You see, I've already got a cinder flour processing plant up here. And at the moment, moment is running very very slowly because i've just got it doing single ones because i didn't need loads but now we need a few more i might as well just come in here and turn that item filter up to a stack at a time and it can just process a whole stack at a time and there we go cinder flower done and lava done i've ticked off everything off my list so that should mean that we've now got all of the ingredients that we need to start making blaze cakes i mean the process is pretty simple really we just need a spout and a depot with lava and blaze cake bases and to make the bases we just need eggs sugar and cinder flour into a basin with the press it doesn't even need heating so that's like two things i'm pretty sure i could probably squeeze that in here to be honest with you this would actually squeeze perfectly into that corner there and then i'd have all of this corner free okay auto crafter is now in the corner auto crafting away which means we've now got plenty of space to produce our blaze cakes right up here i think i've done it this is going to be our blaze cake setup and it's almost ready to go apart from the fact that we've got no lava and i haven't turned it on yet but just like we did in our food factory we've got three outputs going Going on to depots this mechanical arm's going to pick them up and it's going to be in forced round robin mode so it doesn't do anything wrong and it's going to put them in this basin that's going to turn them into blaze cake bases because of the press on top of it and they're just going to fall out of there onto this depot lava's going to come through here get got in there and then it'd be really nice if i could just sort of shove those automatically into there but i think realistically we're going to need one more mechanical arm to pick those items up from there and put them in there now of course i'm going to need a filter for that and because i've never made blaze cakes i haven't got any to use as filters but that's fine let's not worry about that right now let's just throw that down there let's get a little bit of power going to that let's get the power going to this and watch it all go completely wrong so this should make blaze cake bases with a bit of luck there we go we made one now now it's going to turn out oh, you want the blaze cake base mate i don't know where it will have gone either there it is we've got two of them these of course are going to live in here now we can definitely use this for the filter of that but we don't really want that arm sending them that way because they need to have the lava in we're still not got any lava and what i might just do as a very very temporary solution is just set up a very very manual little pump there and then we can pump some of these lava buckets that's in my inventory into the system it's already getting sucked out i want to see it in action no stop no, don't take it stop it okay <laughs> we'll see it this time here we go now there it is we got a blaze cake i can't believe i can't believe i didn't get an achievement for that i didn't get an achievement for a blaze cake oh geez right now i can put that as a filter on there there we go now we can stick this arm back on so deposit in there take from there off you go mate wonderful it's all going rather well what an amazing little factory we got set up here and we've already got six of them now in hindsight what i probably should have done for this episode was done this lava lake first so they actually had time to fill up while i was doing all of the decorating and landscaping and all that sort of thing but it'll get there eventually there's not too many more layers to go but before i go and wish you all a merry christmas it's like you, it was christmas a couple of days ago look it's tomorrow for me mate jeez i want to stick a blaze cake in a blaze burner and see what happens now bear in mind blaze cakes only last 160 seconds whereas lava lasts a thousand seconds it's probably not going to be all that great so at the moment
moment we're producing 262,144 SU. What's it going to be like if I feed a load of these to a load of these things? Here we go. That's half of them. We've got superpower. Does it make any difference at all? Probably not, because my boilers are... No, no, it doesn't make any difference at all, you see, because my boilers are just the same size. See, it's heating up more now, but the boiler's too small and they don't have enough water. That was a total waste of blaze cakes. Oh, well.